Welcome to The Bigger Picture. I have Janae Bridges here with me, two-time Grammy Award winner, mezzo-soprano. Thank you so much for joining me today for The Bigger Picture. I am so excited. Uh, opera singer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not very Thank often you for having me. You know, you've been praised for your plush style mezzo-soprano, your stage presence. Uh, how do you approach cultivating both the technical and emotional aspects of your performances? Oh, wow. Well, um, that's a great question. You know, this career in very specialized art form um, that I so love takes years and years of, of development and honing in on. Um, so for the technique side of things, I've been studying, you know, my voice for many years, <laughs> essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's like that that part never it never stops. The voice is always changing mm -hmm. and evolving and, and maturing. Um, so practice a daily, you know, practice just like an athlete to stay in shape is very much essential and a part of, um, you know, my, uh, my motion and, and, and my, my practice. So there's that side, the technical and then the emotional side. I mean, it depends on the role that I'm approaching, that I'm that I'm learning. Carmen is my signature role. And so um, it's a role that has taken time for me to really uh, develop, develop and like live, actually. Mm. You, you have to have lived some life to really dig into Carmen. And so every every time I approach the role, it's like, oh, that makes more sense now because I can actually kind of apply myself and my life experience yes. to that. So this, this, this thing is like a long, it's a long-term game, you know, mm -hmm. the more experience you have in life, the more um, you mature vocally and just mm -hmm. stay at it, practice, build those uh, muscles and the technique. It kind of just all oh, comes together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I can so, imagine because, yeah, you're right. You have to dig from certain spaces for certain roles, especially those dramatic roles. And opera is very dramatic. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> Everybody's in crisis. <laughs> All the time. That's what it is. <laughs> and love I love that crisis. you mentioned that you were like an athlete because it is. It's very much opera singers are the athletes of the like singing world. You know? Yes, so. I, I would say so. We, you know, we sing unamplified. So that's. Mm -hmm. A workout in itself. Yeah. So, uh, what do you do now? What do you do as far as like? I'm sure you exercise, or there's some kind of form. Yeah. Yes. So what do you do to keep yourself in shape physically? For it? right, because it's such a physical um, endeavor. I definitely work out pretty regularly, um, mm -hmm. at, at least three or four times a week. And um, I was a basketball player, so oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I played basketball. And so you have the of, endurance, you have the stamina and the wind about you. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and, and also just the discipline, you know, for yes. some people working out is like a chore, but for me, it really is a lifestyle that was ingrained at such a young age because of my athletic background. Mm, so, I see. You know, I sometimes still play pickup, um, but I do a lot of Pilates and yoga and even like um, kind of conditioning mm -hmm. things just to get my... Mm -hmm air my capacity yes up because singing yes. a three or four hour opera takes endurance <laughs> in multiple days i mean a week i mean Absolutely. when you're doing a run right so yeah we, we don't we're different than musical theater in that we don't sing every day so once okay. we sing a show we'll, we'll have a couple days in between because it really is just like a singing lot. unamplified you sing with your whole being it's right. a lot so you need you need a couple days to recover so what do you do for that what do you do for your r and r in between ah, great question i mean i i actually try to like just get my mind away from the show <laughs> and like <laughs> so i'll take i'll take walks the building is so large all right so tell me exactly where you are right now tell everybody that's watching where you are right now yeah so i'm in my dressing room right now mm -hmm. um i'm currently in production at the metropolitan opera in new york yes. city yes. for rigoletto and i'm singing the role of magdalena um so i'm in my dressing room we have a little break right now and we're about to start our um, 
our last orchestra rehearsal before our final dress rehearsal, which is uh, coming up tomorrow. So, oh my God, how exciting is that? Putting what it all dream together. come true, though. Yes, there are, That's oh my gosh, absolutely. <laughs> and there are so many pieces to to the puzzle of putting together an opera. You see, yeah. I have my my wig and my, my costume is on the rack, but uh, there's that, there's the orchestra and there's the staging and I'm singing in Italian and memorizing the music. So it's, it's very and layered. That's <laughs> gotta be very tough too. I mean, as far as pronunciation, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of dedication to really, because I mean, when it comes to your opera enthusiasts and your opera purists, yeah, they pay attention to all of those fine details. All of the fine details. So you <laughs> really have to do the work and not skip any steps, you know. And I'm the type of person and artist where that I, I wouldn't feel good about doing that anyways. I want to deliver at at the highest level, at my highest level. So why opera? Why opera? Because it's not like your mainstream right. genre, right? So it's what not. No, you? opera. I mean. I really like to say, because it's true, opera chose me. I okay. had no aspirations to be an opera singer. I was an athlete. I played basketball. Yeah. Um, but a quite dramatic and traumatic incident happened where my basketball coach basically told me that I had to choose between singing and playing basketball. And so he sat me out of a very important game. And I was a starter and a captain. And I was just like on the bench in tears. Devastated. And devastated. And... The game started, I was on the bench, first quarter, second quarter, it was halftime. I was still on the bench and I was like, coach, what's going on? And he yelled at me in front of the whole stadium. It was it was quite something. And that was my last day of competitive basketball playing because I was like, I'm not doing, I'm not taking this. And I was very hurt, um, you know, so I, I walked out of the stadium and I really never looked back, which mm -hmm. is interesting because it, I was very passionate about it, but um, I started to sing and take private lessons. And that gave me a feeling that basketball never really did. I loved basketball and I was good at it. But when I started singing privately and taking mm -hmm. voice lessons, I just thought, whoa, this yeah. is a world that I really resonate with. And I feel deeply like I want to know more. So it sounds like to me between the basketball and you were the, the captain and, you know, especially with opera, people don't realize you have a competitive spirit. Oh, yes. <laughs> because opera is very competitive. Right. Can be. Yes. Yeah. So especially I would think for us. Right. Because there aren't a lot. I feel like it's a, a field that's not dominated too much by black women. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong. We have our Leontine Price. We have oh, yeah. our Jackie Normans. We have powerhouses that really forged through and, and made a difference for Absolutely. us. Coming, you know, but still. But we're still not the majority. Of you. Right. Right. Or exactly. So that brings me to ask you, you know, you've been deeply involved in the, in the movement for racial justice in classical music. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you see the opera world evolving in terms of of inclusivity. Yes, it's a great topic of discussion and necessary. Um, it's definitely evolving. And I will say, I, I'm, I'm kind of happy to say that I feel like I've been a part of that because in 2020, when there was this national reckoning mm. um, after the murder of George Floyd, Mm. I, I I couldn't sing anything. I, I was asked to sing a recital, a virtual recital, because we were all stuck in the house. Right. I was asked to sing a virtual recital um, with LA Opera. And I said, listen, as much as I would love to sing, I can't. I can't do this. I'm mourning <laughs> right now. What I can do is gather some of my closest colleagues, my Black colleagues, and mm. talk about, and just talk. How are you feeling? Mm. And And how are we? Yeah. As Black opera singers, this could have been us. You know, um, it could have been my brother, my dad. That's right. So I moderated that conversation on the platform of LA Opera and it went viral. And it really... I have goosebumps. I, I literally, if you could see, I have goosebumps <laughs> on my arms. <laughs> I mean, it was a scary thing for me to do, though, because I was like, I don't know if they're ever going to hire me again. Fear of retribution, because we just went there. We were like, this is what we go through. We're tired of this. 
um, having to, you know, sing a full show and express and do what we love and then come out of the stage door and be arrested, you know, like, or, or even go before Lawrence Brownlee told a story of he was pulled over right before he had to sing mm. the major leading role and he was fearing for his life and then had to go out and sing and deliver. So we just spoke our truth and it was like people, they saw us and heard us in a different way. Mm. Um, just because we'd never shown that side of us. And right. so that really sparked a reckoning in the, the opera world, but also classical mu music world at large. And um, more of us are on stage, more of us are backstage. And, mm. um, you know, when we're telling our stories more and that is automatically going to expand and diversify the audience um and make people feel included mm -hmm. so yeah. i i see steps definitely happening um and they will continue to happen because the industry has recognized that um they're better with with us and with everybody you know yes of course everything's I mean, better with a little season and some sesame i mean okay <laughs> okay so that's just a given. And so I'm I'm happy because I just feel like we still have obviously so far to go. What do you think can be done in the industry to move forward from this point other than open dialogue? Yeah, open dialogue for sure. Mm -hmm. I think um, more Black people in positions of power. Mm -hmm. We need money <laughs> you know <laughs> well money makes the world go around absolutely money makes the world go around <laughs> but we need like black dollars yes you know um yes. and we need like i said more of us in positions of power conductors directors ceos um along with an open and honest dialogue yes um and i think exposure I think that opera needs more exposure, you know, yes. so that younger people can see that we are everywhere and that Absolutely. we are not, and that we are not just in one, you know, I mean, granted, you know, we have other genres of music, of course, that we dominate and that's great. Yes. However, you know, there no, are other things or other opportunities. Absolutely. So and I just, you know, for instance, the Grammys, like I should be singing on the Grammy stage. I should be just the award shows and, That's right. and I, you know, it should be a part of uh, the popular canon, you know? I should have to look you up to right. see that you're a two-time Grammy award winning singer. Mm. You hmm. know? Um, I agree. So yes, you're right. And that's part of exposure. That's part of black dollars. That's part of black business, us being in leadership roles, us starting our committees, right? Um, so yeah, I think that's beautiful. And also, it, it, also us, um, you know, like in the more popular sectors, mm. Mm. being open to something different, you know, yeah. because people don't even know that they love opera because they just have no exposure to it. So it's like, once yeah. I get in the room, I got you. I just got to get in the room. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so within us being you know being more inclusive and and not gatekeeping yes and, and taking a little bit more risk it's yes. easy to sell sex for instance that's right but i can sell and not taking my clothes off and you'd be like whoa what was that sound you just made i want to hear more yes yes um, so we're not one dimensional people by any means and for me i'm just I'm at a point where it's like, okay, it's time to get into to rooms that I typically as an opera singer wouldn't be invited to, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, making that happen and, and making the connections and the relationships and yeah. Where do you get your strength from? Taking risks. Where do you get all that, I, you know, that chutzpah? Where do you get that from? <laughs> I love that question. <laughs> First of all, God. For sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was born this way. I was really born with a lot of ambition. Mm -hmm. But I will also say my mother. 
<laughs> Pamela Bridges, she is a force of nature. And, you know, growing up, I was like, wow, this woman, she's different. We didn't get along so much because I'm naturally, while I do have the chutzpah, I'm very, I'm kind of shy and I'm a mm -hmm. bit reserved. Mm -hmm. um, and my dad, my father is that way. So I have a great balance between them. But growing up, I was like, my mother is like, she's just different. <laughs> she has energy. She makes things happen. Um, there's nothing she can't do. So I grew up with that model. Mm -hmm. And even when I didn't know that it was being ingrained, right. it, it, it was just like downloading. And so I just really attribute a lot of my um, forward thinking and motion and ability to get things done. Mm -hmm. uh, I attribute that to my mom for sure. And then also my father, like he's very grounded. And once he has something in his mind, it happens, you know? So my so, parents okay. have been he kind of, he manifests, he knows how to, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I will say that, you know, and then also I'm just so inspired. My siblings, we're all, very different in our occupations, but they also uh, siblings. Just, How many siblings? Yeah. Three. I have two brothers and a sister. Nice. Two boys, two girls. Yeah, and so they're all very driven mm -hmm. in in their respective fields, and so I'm inspired by them. So we're always checking in, like, hey, what's the news? Um, you know, how's it going? And they're always sharing their good news in our family chat. We have a family chat, and it's just like all the good news. We're very, we're all very close. Um, now, are you the only musical child? I'm the only one that pursued it. Yeah, we, right. we did. My my parents st stuck us all into piano lessons at a very age. <laughs> a lot of yeah. parents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, just a yeah. level of discipline. Yeah. Comes with it. Exactly. So we were all stuck into piano lessons at an early age, but I was the only one that stuck with it because I, I just got the bug, you know. I had the music bug, but they all appreciate music and they know when something doesn't sound good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that's important. <laughs> yeah, it is. But they 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 feel it and they love it. And you know, we grew up with music, um, mm -hmm. not necessarily classical, Motown, mostly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jazz, well, yeah, gospel. Staple. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a staple too. <laughs> yes. So that was always, you know, um, just very integral in my in my upbringing, and it still is. You know, Christmas holidays. And New Year's, just big holidays in general. We always, we still dance. We listen to music. We go out. Um, we have a lot of fun surrounding Excellent. music. <laughs> That's important. And you need that. You need that foundation, I'm sure, to do everything that you do. You know, it's really Absolutely. important. Absolutely. I can't imagine doing this career without. Without your family. Without my family and the support. You know, I'm sure I would make it happen somehow, but it just makes it all the more um more fulfilling and and better and easier yeah also, they they love my career they they come all around the world i was gonna ask you do, do they come often to see you oh yes they i mean between my parents and my siblings i i rarely have them all in the house at the same time but mm -hmm. on occasion it happens like my met debut they all came my san francisco debut mm -hmm. but for instance i was just saying carmen in hamburg germany and mm -hmm. um I was going to ask you where else you've performed. I mean, as far oh, as like yeah. letting everybody know, like Europe, I know Europe is big as far yes. as opera is concerned. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I perform everywhere. I mean, I just got done, finished with the run in Hamburg, Germany. And this mm -hmm. year I'll be all over. I'm, I'm starting here in New York and then I'm making my hometown debut in Tacoma, Washington, nice. south of Seattle. Yeah. And then I'll be in Minnesota for New Year's, which I'm like, okay, didn't. Didn't imagine I'll ever be in Minnesota, but I'm singing a New Year's concert <laughs> with the Minnesota Orchestra. It's going to be very cold, but wow. also yeah, very cold. <laughs> yes. And then I'll be back in Seattle and D.C., which I'm really yes. excited about. Um, I love What well, makes you excited? Okay. Oh, well, I mean, I'm sure I, that's I just I love D.C. D.C. is D.C., right? Chocolate yeah. City. And my mother's from Baltimore originally. Okay. So I have a lot of family in the DMV and. I just love singing at the Kennedy Center. It's just like, mm -hmm. it's, there's something very special about that place. You yeah. know, it's, uh, it's funny. The Kennedy Center named you one of its next 50 cultural leaders in 2022. How yeah. does this recognition influence your work and how do you envision 
using your platform to inspire the next generation of musicians. Mm, wow. Well, it's such an honor, you know, to, to, to have um, the Kennedy Center behind me in that capacity. Mm. I plan to use it, first of all, by continuing to be excellent. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and sing on the world's greatest stages. Um and and really create space for the next generation. I'm very passionate about continuing um, the legacy of the Black opera singer mm. because I came from it, you know, and 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 I honor my ancestors very heavily. Um, yeah. So I believe that there's a way to, yes, pass the torch, but also like while I'm in the race, make a lane for the next person to run this race with me. Right. Um, so I'm a part of a few organizations, Kappa, Coalition of African Americans in the Performing Arts, which is based in DC. And we create um, opportunities for the young, the next generations, mm -hmm. performance opportunities, mentoring, mm -hmm. um, and then also Black, Black Leaderships Arts Collective. And this is actually a really cool collective because it's, essentially the kind of the top black opera singers in the game right now. And we've come together because we're friends off stage too. So we've come together and we formed a group also to um, mentor and bring up the next generations because it's, it's just so important. I feel like um, culturally we have to do that for each other because yes. it's just not necessarily a guarantee that someone else will. That's right. Um, and so breaking down these stereotypes of the crabs in a barrel syndrome and, yes. um, you know, yes, being competitive, but also most importantly, I, I'm really just competitive with myself. So I, I'm not I'm not really thinking about anybody else. I know who's out there, of course. Not <laughs> Well, you have but, to have somewhat of a competitive, I guess, like nature, you know, whether it's with yourself and it's you against you or so have you any other possibility or, you know, dynamic, it, it's important, you know, because it kind of helps fuel the yes. fire to succeed, you know? Yes. So yes. absolutely. Um, so, but these are two organizations that I'm very proud to be a part of because yeah. we're actively creating space and opportunity and, and giving these next stars, mm. um, the inside, you know, scoops and tips and like, how it goes, even financial, you know, like, mm -hmm. yes, you have this big check, but it's really not a big check because That's you, have right. your, you have to pay your manager. You have to pay taxes. That's right. Um, so I didn't necessarily have all of this information and a lot of my colleagues mm -hmm. didn't. So we're like, okay, let's help so that the next generation can actually thrive and not just like be hit and, and survive, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah and and i i just i'm always uplifting my people whenever i can because mm -hmm. um we need it yes and there are yes, so many forces that try to take us down and we're not going back no no we're not and i can't tell you how excited i was like i said uh when i came across your name and I came across wow. your journey. How did you come across my name? I'm so curious. Well, actually, you know, I follow uh, Black Women in Opera mm. on Instagram, which, by the way, is such a great platform. I'm so glad to see that the, there are so many platforms anymore that cater to, you know, like I said, things that are not necessarily mainstream. You know, they're giving exposure to, uh, and, and it's just, again, people will talk about social media in a bad way. It's not always a bad thing. So right. also, you know, and then your name came across my desk wow. and I, it was just like kismet. Like I was just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. That is kismet. Yeah. So I was just like, great. I'm so excited. And, uh, and, and I, I looked you up and I was just like, this is beautiful. It's perfect. Oh, um, the universe, universe moves in. Yes. Amazing ways. Um, Absolutely. And you sound like you're musical. The, the terminology that you use. Are you a singer? Or do you have? I, I am. I am a singer. Yeah. Um, uh, I try to refrain from talking about myself too much in interviews. Okay. Okay. Uh, but, but but I will tell you, since you've asked, uh, I was trained. 
uh, operatically because I love opera. I absolutely love opera. I grew up on Kiri Te Kanawa, who was my grandma's wow. favorite. Wow. Oh, you wow. know, and then that's when I did more research as I got to be uh, like a teenager into my amazing. Teens. So I went ahead and I went to school and I got my my degree in music performance and voice, and I had the opportunity Wonderful. to train operatically. Now I am not you, honey, <laughs> <laughs> but I know the work it takes. Yeah, I know what it feels like. Uh, it, it you know as far as in the body, in the mind, in the spirit. Right. And I just think it's so beautiful, you know. And just talking to you, it just kind of just lights me up inside. It does. Aww. That's why, as you can see, I'm talking to you, and I'm just like, oh, this is. A I love that. Well, I I got that sense. I got yeah. that sense. Like, yeah. I really love this art form. So it's I always. Do. So nice. who's your favorite? I mean, I know it's hard to probably say one. <laughs> <laughs> who's your top three? Hmm. Okay. That's easier. Definitely, um, Lillian Dean Bryce. Uh huh. She's she's definitely up there. Are are we talking black artists or? You can whatever whatever your top three are, my love. Really, um, whatever your top okay. three opera singers are. Lillian Dean Bryce. Mm hmm. These might be cliche, but it's it's just what it is. Actually, Lillian Dean Bryce, John Vickers. Okay. You know that name? I don't know that name. I, oh, I wow. got into the women. I didn't get into the men. I know. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. But John that's okay. Baker. I'm going to look them up now when we hang up. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> oh, listen to his comfort E from Messiah. It's just like uh, the color and the beauty of his, a bigger voice tenor. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of pretty much cliche on that because the one that I loved listening to, I loved his Nissim, is it Nissim Dorma? Is, um, Domingo. Oh, yeah. Plus, oh, man. Yeah. There are just so many. Yeah. Um, okay. And then uh, who else? I mean, Shirley Barrett. She was my Yes. Girl. I know who she is. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, just beautiful. Voice yes. powerful. And she, her essence is just, yeah. But there are so many. There are so many. For me, it was Jesse Norman. Oh, she yeah. She would bring me to, I don't know, it was like the, the, the richness oh, yeah. of it all, you know? And just effortless. That's like, hard. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> she's up there too. Yes. Yeah. I, I actually, know. I feel very connected oh, to her. I sang at her, um, more, all her funeral, funeral actually. actually. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, so, moving and also very. Oh, it was tough, but it was like. Intense. It was intense. And at the same time, I felt it, it was very spiritual because. The day she passed was the day, my first day walking into the Met to make my debut. So I just oh, felt in a way like she was saying, it's your time. It's right here. She was right here. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It has been such a pleasure talking to you today. Wow. It really you has. Well. You as well. <laughs> it's always just so nice to share, you know, in something that we love so deeply and also, um, with the sister, you know? Yes. yes, I know. It makes it even more special. So yeah. thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to let you get back to your rehearsal. You <laughs> have been absolutely lovely. I can't wait to share this interview. <laughs> I'm so, and I can't wait to share it as well on my, on my platforms. Where are you based? I am, you mean physically? Yeah, like where do you live? I'm in New York. I'm in New York. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. I'm in New York. Okay, yeah, cool. I'm in New you York. Have, you got to come um, to Rigoletto. I would love to. Yeah. I would absolutely love to. So we're going okay, to have so, happen. And I know you're no, there. No. November 3rd, I think, is the last performance date, right? And there's special I think November October. 8th, actually. November 8th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I will absolutely come down there. And I will absolutely, yeah. I have to meet you. <laughs> yes, you do. So let me, um, let me know when you want to come. I absolutely will. I will. Yeah. And okay. that concludes our interview today. I'm going to connect with you on social media. Tell everyone where they can find you on social media and across yes. the internet. <laughs> well, the internet, you can Google my name, Janae Bridges. But on Instagram, my handle is Janae B. Mezzo, J-N-A-I-B-M-E-Z-Z-O. And you can also find me on TikTok on threads. You just Google my name, Janae Bridges. And also I have a Facebook um, professional page. My 
website is JanaeBridges.com. Excellent. Excellent. So everyone, you need to check her out. As you can see, she is absolutely amazing. (laughs) Two-time Grammy Award winning. Thank you so much. I hope you have a beautiful day. Don't work too hard. I guess you have to work hard, but not too hard, you know? <laughs> yeah. Make sure you get into that R&R. And I will. Get, be blessed, my love. And I am going you to as well. you right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. All right, love. See you at the opera. <laughs>